Uh, we have somebody uh, to join the meeting. Oh, yes. 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 Who is this? So let's switch to English. Uh, so we were just talking about an, a trademark infringement case in Brazil. That's uh, um, the Johnny Walker uh, whiskey against a uh, sugar uh, cane based drink. It was uh, an iconic case because the Superior Court uh, ruled that there was infringement of a famous trademark that was a translation and defendant was condemned to pay indemnification. Uh, this decision is a very recent decision. It was issued last month. Uh, so we are going to the second, to the second one. Uh, this is a very uh, interesting case uh, as well. Uh, there is a, a, a hospital in the city of Sao Paulo, which um, has the name Albert Einstein in its, in its name. There was a, um, an express authorization from the family uh, to the hospital to use the name Albert Einstein. And the thing is that the hospital not only uh, filed and registered applications uh, in, the, in class 39 for uh, hospital services, but also in the educational field. And the thing is that the, the hospital um, began to, to, to sue um, local uh, schools that were using the name Albert Einstein in their trade names. So what this specific school did was to um, cancel uh, partially their registration covering the school services because there was no specific authorization from the family for them to use uh, Albert Einstein for uh, school services, but only in the field of hospital. And this case um, uh, went all the way up to the Superior Court of Justice. And in a decision that was uh, rendered um, last week, the Superior Court of Justice ruled that uh, due to the lack of specific authorization from the HERS, a registration granted in local class uh, 41 should be partially canceled to exclude educational services. And the, the, the thing about this decision is that uh, they, they are talking uh, all the time about the uh, specific need for authorization for use of a civil name. And what we thought it was very interesting is that we are dealing here with talking about a very famous name. So the authorization does not grant exclusive rights unless otherwise expressly foreseen. So that means that at this moment, the, the hospital um, it's not allowed to use the name Albert Einstein uh, uh, in relation to schools. And that's something that they must now deal with because they are already dealing uh, uh, in this area. So they have a university in Sao Paulo. So let's go to, okay, to the other, yes. Now we are going to, to talk about some decisions issued by the trademark office. Anna, it's you. Thank you, Rafaela. Hi, Isaac Khan. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, my colleagues as well. Uh, the first decision uh, relates to coexistence agreements. And here's some background to you. Uh, the BTO, until the early 90s, accepted coexistence agreements in, uh, in most cases. But since the early 90s, the BTO changed its understanding as far as these coexistence agreements are concerned. And since then, the BTO has, uh, is of the opinion that priority is to be given to the rights and interests of consumers in order to avoid the risk of confusion or wrongful association. And uh, so that the undertakings between private entities, which were in the past considered and accepted, Nowadays, are, uh, to say the, the least, in very rare cases accepted because of this, uh, so to speak, new understanding of the BTO. So agreements are accepted only on a case by case basis. Eu estava falando sem som, né? Peraí. 
Não, estava com som, Ana. É que deu ah, é? fechou o som, é. Ah, tá. É, so agreements are accepted on a case by case basis, even though uh, the BTO usually states uh, in its legal in its opinions that uh, the agreements were considered. In most cases, uh, the examiner states that the agreement has not been accepted because of this and that, and then he lists other arguments when granting appeals. Uh, one decision has uh, caught my attention, namely the allowance of applications for trademark yes in classes one and 35. According to the information provided by the BTO in its website, allowance of these applications uh, was declared in attention to the grounds set forth in the filing petition, especially with regard to the coexistence agreement executed with the holder of the senior mark. So this is the brief information uh, included in the BTO's website. And here we can see that the applicant, uh, fearing that uh, its applications would be refused, anticipated a possible negative ruling by submitting the coexistence agreement along with the filing petition. But contrary to the brief information in the website of the BTO, the examiner's opinion states the contrary, saying among others that coexistence, coexistence has been allowed because these new applications should be considered as mere extension of the rights already secured by the applicant. So if no questions, I would ask Rafaela to please go to the next page. Thank you. Uh, the second decision is indeed a very interesting one uh, and it deals with famous marks. Here's some, uh, a brief background as well. According to our IP law, marks registered in Brazil and deemed to be famous shall be afforded special protection in all fields of activity. And the basic requirement for that is then uh, the existence of a registration granted by the BTO. And uh, in my experience, the most suitable means of evidencing the, the high renown, this special status, is by means of a market survey. Even though the BTO uh, does not make it mandatory, the submission of a market survey, uh, as I said, in my experience, this is the most, uh, let's say, effective way to, to, to have the high renown recognized. And this market survey consists in 2002 interviews and uh, the individuals taking part in this market survey must be Brazilians of different ages different social and educational background, and also living in all states of the Brazilian territory. So it's indeed quite comprehensive. And the decision granted, uh, decision rendered in this case is a very interesting one because uh, it was rendered by the appeal board. We had first a negative ruling denying the special status to trademark Bosch. We then appealed and uh, the appeal board, contrary to the understanding of the special commission, which uh, rendered the first decision, uh, stated that the, the margin of error of 2% should be considered so that instead of 51%, 53% of the Brazilian population is familiar with trademark Bosch. Another very interesting aspect was that the examiner considered 48% of respondents who associated trademark Bosch with car and motorcycle parts. And 11% associated trademark Bosch to uh, water heaters. And these products, the car and automobile parts, were covered by a second registration and the water heaters were covered by a third registration. But uh, the examiner stressed this point and uh, also highlighted that the high renown applies to the sign, to the trademark, and not to a 
not necessarily to a single registration. And also he, he observed that these two father registrations, they were granted, they, they relate to the very same mark and they were granted prior to our request of recognition as famous marks. So this decision uh, reflects uh, that the results of the survey were considered in a more comprehensive and in a more, much more realistic manner. And the examiner also uh, made reference to another case where similar criteria has, have also been applied, namely uh, the decision which granted the status, uh, the famous status to trademark Jaguar. Next one, please, Rafaela. Now the third case uh, deals with the parasitic exploitation theory, the combi genes case. In this case, uh, Volkswagen do Brasil filed a cancellation action administrative nullity against a registration for trademark combi genes in class 25 on the grounds of its registration for trademark combi granted in former local, local class seven, which corresponds to international class 12. And the examiner was in agreement to, to apply the theory of parasitic exploitation. And even though he pointed out that the products are dissimilar, he found that the fields, clothing on one side and automobiles on the other side, that they are inserted in segments in fields that can be related. And he also noted that many car manufacturers indeed launch uh, clothing collections so as to advertise their marks. Uh, the examiner also noted that the identity of marks in the name of different holders uh, can uh, have a strong potential to lead to confusion or wrongful association. And he stressed as well that combi is not to be regarded as a diluted designation. And even though there are registrations for of third parties bearing combi, they are either under already under attack by means of nullity proceedings or are still subject to those proceedings. On a further note, he added that uh, the holder of this registration for combi genes, should the registration be maintained, he would benefit from the goodwill, the efforts and all uh, investments made by Volkswagen do Brasil. So it would be against uh, the law. Uh, in order to, in the appeal, during the examination of the nullity request, uh, an office action was issued by the BTO and they requested us to submit further evidence of the high renowned status of trademark combi. And here we have to establish the difference. Here the high renowned is not the same as in, it was in the case uh, Bosch, because in the case Bosch, in the Bosch case, there was no conflict. It was the mark itself that should or not be regarded as famous. Here, the high renown apply, applies to the cancellation of this uh, registration. And we did then submit uh, more evidence and the examiner was then convinced that uh, the high renown uh, of trademark combi should be uh, acknowledged and then uh, be a reason for the cancellation of the registration for trademark combi genes. Any questions? <clears throat> Rafaela, you are on mute. Yes. Uh, so we are going to be very fast. It's the last, um, the last case that we're going to talk about. We're going to uh, chat a little bit position marks. And the most iconic uh, position mark uh, is the Lobotan Red Soul. 
what is happening right now at the trademark office is that uh, very recently, so first of all, the, our IP law does not expressly contemplate protection for position marks at, as it is right now. Um, so uh, in, in, in the past, uh, we started uh, through our associations to, to, to discuss the need of a new regulation uh, to, to provide and, and regulate the protection of non-traditional trademarks, including uh, position marks. Uh, very recently, uh, in, in, in September, the Trademark Office issued a new regulation with a technical note, and um, they um, where uh, they said or they understand that a position mark is an ever distinctive sign, visually perceptible, that consists in a specific way of being placed in a determined support. Uh, the position mark must be composed of distinctive set. It must be capable of identifying and distinguishing its goods or, or services. In this case of Louboutin, we are specifically uh, talking about shoes. Um, there, there's, there's going to be a discussion because uh, the protection, as, as it was uh, claimed, um, shows um, a shoe, uh, a, a women's shoe, but as we know, Louboutin uses a red sole for every other kind of shoe. For example, uh, tennis shoes, they do have the red sole and uh, shoes for even for kids and for men, they all have this red sole and it must be formed by application of a sign a singular and specific position. So we have to show to the trademark office where this position mark is, is used. And this application must be able to dissociate from technical or functional set. Um, what is happening right now is that uh, all applications that were filed and were uh, waiting for examination as position marks will have to be converted. So this, there's going to be this conversion process within the next uh, 90 days. Uh, our, our main uh, a critic uh, or main critics, because we do have uh, lots of them, is that first uh, the trademark office is issued this new regulation with no uh, deadline specified for uh, examining the cases. So uh, even though we do have a new regulation, there is no uh, time frame for for the cases to be examined, and the. Um, uh, what uh, we have heard from the trademark office and the director at the trademark department is that they do have an IT problem to prosecute this kind of uh, trademarks. Um, so what we are doing right now at the office is uh, beginning this process of conversion. Uh, in the specific case of Louboutin, we have already asked the client for new uh, a new, more uh, uh, visible uh, logos of the mark so that we can provide the examiner uh, with that. Anna, do, do you want to add something to, our, to about the, the, the position marks? Uh, Hold on. Muted me, okay, now, okay. Uh, one thing uh, which has been very much criticized is the fact that in, his, in its response to the public consultation uh, the PTO made, we as association, uh, we also uh, suggested that the secondary meaning should be recognized, but the BTO uh, sticks to the understanding that distinctiveness must be concrete, must be a fact. Uh, during the substantive examination and not uh, by acquired distinctiveness. This, I think, is uh, a very critical point. But as you said, Rafaela, the fact that the BTO has implemented these new rules without giving uh, information about the effective implementation is uh, very frustrating. And also the, the technical note itself makes it very difficult in our understanding 
for a trademark to be recognized as a position mark because the BTO sets, uh, he, it has included many examples of what does not qualify instead of providing uh, as many as possible examples of, of what could be or would qualify as position mark. And we are going to, to send a paper to the BTO. We, I mean, uh, our local associations uh, asking the BTO to, to give information on, on a, or to leave, at least to provide an estimate as to when these, uh, these new rules will be applied and uh, when the when new position marks are the already uh, on 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 records are going to be examined. 